Hmm. An interesting read, eh, Boris? I always love to read about my cousins, the witch. <laughs> of course, you know, I am a quarter witch myself, as being quarter vampire, quarter ghoul, and uh, uh, quarter witch. And, uh, and uh, what was the other? Was it vampire, witch, ghoul? And werewolf, of course, can't forget that, can we? So it makes 100% monster, <laughs> my memory. Well, well, hello, my dear fiends, hello, and welcome to Monster Movie Night. I am Bobby Gal Monster, your internet horror host, along with my co-host, Boris T. Buzzard. Thank you, one and all, for visiting us here at Gargoyle Manor, the Monster Museum. And we love to have you. I was perusing one of my books that we have here in the library. Uh, it's about witches, you know. Uh, my cousins uh, of the air <laughs> and the cauldron. And, well, you know, not all witches are bad and not all bad witches are good, but, you know, sometimes there is a middle ground. We have some that are very mischie mischievy or mischievous. <laughs> you know, sort of like the Halloween ones that loves to uh, play a practical joke here and there, or give a treat or a trick rather than a treat sometimes. Well, tonight's feature is called The Witch, and it stars Rosanna Schiaffino, as also Richard Johnson. Now, as the name of the first uh, actor told, it was it's an Italian film, so a, Italian witchcraft, and a little different than American or English witchcraft, but not a lot. It's it's uh, well, you know, there's things about it that uh, well, just a little bit of a twist. Sometimes they they can get out of hand, and well, it becomes a wonderful horror movie. <laughs> well. Not only do we have tonight's wonderful big feature, The Witch, but we also have a treat in store for you a little later on. It's a short by Jay Crimson called, well, The Witch. <laughs> and, uh, and a little later on than that, we're going to have a wonderful interview with Jay Crimson, the independent filmmaker himself. Well, until that time, let's turn right around here and go to the old haunted keyboard and, and key in The Witch. Starring Richard Johnson and Rosanna Schiaffino. Excellent, excellent. Now, let's key it into the, well, key it in. Let's tune it in to the old haunted TV. <laughs>
Joe. You'd better hurry if you want to take me to the office now. Martha. Yes, sir, Joe? She's there again. Who, dear? That old lady. Who is she? No, but for the last several days, I keep running into her. I'm sure it's a coincidence. No, no. She's following me. Why should she be following you? Will you tell me? Come on, Sergio, get dressed. It's late. Do you mind making the bed? Who, me? Yes, the maid's not coming in today. <sighs> ah, nice way to make up the bed. Come on, get up. I'll do it myself. Uh... What is it? Does the old lady put you in a bad mood? Yeah. Ah, she's disappeared. There she is. Well, why not go over to her and ask her what she wants? Ah. Sergio, why don't we get married someday? I'll think about it. I'm launching the idea. Do try to think about it. Ciao, dear. I'm alone. Would you put me up for a couple of weeks, Lorna? You know how I hate hotels, huh? And Marta? She kicked me out. But you're joking. No, oh, it's true, really. She got tired of me and tossed me out of my ear. I've got my things in the car. Excuse me, be right back. Who's that lady? Do you know her? No. What does she want? She was looking for a newsstand. Uh, who's that woman you were talking to just now? The one in the white coat? Yes, yeah, it's a peculiar character, isn't she? If you ask me, she's a pain in the behind. Why? What did she want? Uh, she messed up the newsstand looking for an ad. But nothing. What was the ad? Something in the wanted column on the left page. for an hour? Even two if you wish. No, one's enough. A little something bothering me. Ciao. See you later. Get lunch ready in the meantime. I will.
Hello? Nobody here? To your left. One more flight. Am I wrong, or haven't I seen you somewhere before? Come on up, Senor Logan. You know my name, Senor. Well, here we are, face to face. Disappointed. Depends. Will you come in? My name's Consuelo Llorente. I consider sunlight the worst enemy of old things. Will you please sit down? Uh, I prefer to stand. Will you have a drink? No, thanks. Nice, quiet place you have here. Do you live alone? I'm a widow. And you haven't found any consolation yet? Why do you use that tone? Why have you been following me? I remember the first time I saw you was about a month ago in a restaurant near the Pantheon. Ever since then, everywhere I go, everywhere I look, I seem to see you. Isn't it just coincidence? Now, tell me, this advertisement is a coincidence as well. Wanted for cataloging manuscripts in a private library. A young graduate from the University of Salamanca, knowledge Spanish, English, and Arabic, bachelor with no family attachments, born in Rome of American parents. How many people have answered that? So far, you're the only one. Nobody else will. You know why? Because this advertisement describes me. It's true, I did follow you. My first impression was that you were the man I wanted, but I needed more information to know you better. Am I your type? Your profile is of no importance, and it does not have to be pleasing to me. You're here to work. What at? It's written in the advertisement. Nothing else. If you have no intention of accepting, why did you come? Hmm. Legitimate curiosity, I should think, since I was the object of such ardent attention. You'll be handsomely paid. How much? 300,000 lira a month. That's a rather a low offer. I might raise it a bit. And besides, you'll have the best room in the palazzo. You mean I'm supposed to live here? Of course. It's better for work. Well, let's say 400,000 a month. Plus room and board, of course. <laughs> for this kind of a job, twice as much wouldn't be enough. Even three times as much. Young man, what are you driving at? Look, there aren't any manuscripts. And there isn't any library to be put in order. The only thing which needs putting in order is you. And that isn't quite my line of activity. You're quite vain, aren't you? <laughs> Vainer than I had imagined. If a woman interests herself in you, it is only because she wants to devour you. That's usually the case, as you should know, if you've been following me. <laughs> so far, I've seen you mainly devoured by young animals. And I don't intend to change. Ah, I'm sorry to squelch your vanity. I don't want a lover, but only someone to take care of those manuscripts. Because the library exists. Come, I'll show you. If you're looking for a librarian, you better get another man for the job. Sooner or later, someone will show up with the same qualifications as in that advertisement. I won't insist. But come and look at the library, so that after leaving, you may think anything of me, but not that I'm a liar. Your newly acquired friend won't run away. I'm only asking for a few minutes. This lift was put in by my husband in his last years. He was getting old. He was most extraordinary, and his manuscripts are the only precious things I have left of him. They are the memoirs of our life, of mine and his. Uh -huh. 
You see what state it's in. It needs putting in order. Why don't you call some... <laughs> do you think you're the first? It's a torment. There are few who are fit to do this work, much less the one I have now. You've already got a librarian? A brainless good-for-nothing, foolish and without will, who's only succeeded in making me loathe him. Why don't you give him the sack? Ah, uh, it's not easy making him leave, but it's difficult. My main hope was that you would enable me to get rid of him. Uh, that's a bit much, isn't it? If you were to come here, he wouldn't behave like he was master. Well, what else did he do, apart from not cleaning up the library? The most important thing would be that of transcribing and arranging the parts my husband had sketched barely in the memoirs. You might as well know I couldn't do that. You're the right man for it, which is why I picked you. Don't think you'll have to work on some boring story, maudlin and sugar-coated, no. Mm -mm. Read a page. Just read at random. You're caught in a misunderstanding, if you don't mind. Read it, and you'll see. You read it if it's so important to you. Here, we were both at Pomplona during the fiesta. Yes, when the bulls are allowed the freedom of the streets and the youngsters go after them, fearless completely. Ever see it? Most exciting. Well then, I closed the back door that led to the patio and saw Consuelo in the arms of Luis, who was still excited over his victory in the arena. She looked radiant. And her lips, each time they withdrew from the mouth of Luis, whispered sweet, tender words, soft and indistinct. At my entrance, she turned and her eyes looked straight into mine. It was like a melting embrace. See how colorful the style is. She smiled and blew me a kiss, by which she meant that even in the arms of another, she was mine, and mine only forever. Unfaithfulness had become a state of grace in which we felt a more perfect union. At that moment, Abel appeared. And what did Abel do? Read it and find out. Is all the rest in this colorful style? My husband and I were never afraid of what was prohibited. Now, don't tell me this doesn't interest you, preferring what is banal. Common little adventures. I believe you don't, but that's your affair. I only wanted you to know that these pages contain the tenderest expression of feeling that man could dedicate to the woman he loved. Are all the manuscripts about you? They begin with our encounter in Spain. I was 16, the world was mine. But like all things, beauty fades. But I don't regret anything. I face the sunset with serenity. Well, I must confess, I'm interested in eroticism. But not in an archaeological sense. I ought to go. Madame, what is it? <laughs> Dr. Rossi, please. It's Sergio Logan. Marco, Sergio, look, there's a woman sick here. Can you come over right away? I think she might have poisoned herself. I don't know. She took some sort of a potion and collapsed. Oh, to hell with the police. You come over. It's a palace on the Lago del Moro. Uh-huh. I'll wait for you. Goodbye. Madame Lorenzi, what have you done? What was in this? Go away. I'm better go away. I'm better. Can't you see? I'm better. I'll try and get somebody. Don't call anybody! I'm better. I'm all right.
Good evening. You want to know who I am? My name is Aura. I'm her daughter. Senor Llorente. Your mother's not feeling well. She's over in there. It's nothing serious. She drank something and fainted. It often happens. I've already called a doctor. A friend of mine. This is the cup she drank from. For some time I've suspected my mother takes drugs. It's only an impression, but I pity her. It must be difficult to grow old when you've been a famous beauty. Will you help me bring her to her bedroom? She'll come out of it before long. She's the dearest, sweetest person in the world. How fresh your skin remains. Thirty years ago, you'd have fallen madly in love with my mother. I'd prefer to run the risk with her daughter. We all love risk in words. But do you love it in fact? You want me to prove it? Come, we'll let her rest. What will you do now? Go away? Actually, I was looking for an excuse to stay. Perhaps I can wait for my friend, the doctor, to arrive. Meanwhile... I might show you the rest of the house, if that would interest you. Anything interesting, apart from you? How about the chapel? Centuries ago, a pope celebrated the funeral rites of one of my mother's ancestors. He was a cardinal, you see. And your father? He was the Mexican ambassador to Rome for many years. But he'd met my mother in Seville. Well, it's a pity to let her go to rack and ruin like this. It costs too much to have it repaired. We're not very rich. Perhaps you waste too much money. Librarians, following people. Half the palace has been stripped by creditors. You see, my mother has spent a fortune going to clinics all over Europe, especially in Switzerland. The Swiss are specialists. In squeezing money out of you. <laughs> no, in combating old age. You see, my mother won't surrender to time. That's funny. She told me exactly the opposite before. She was lying. She was lying like all people without age. Have you ever stopped to think how interesting it must be to be a confessor? Search inside of people. God only knows the things this great has heard. You have the same pretty way of leaning your head on one shoulder. Who? Your mother and you. Your movements are more similar than your looks. We have absolutely nothing in common. Nothing. What else would you like to see now? Your room. Perhaps later. <laughs> did you really believe my mother wanted to seduce you before? Well, how did you know that? Spying on us or something? Does that sort of thing amuse you? Very much. I'm curious. Come, I'll have you see the garden. That's my scene with your mother? Amusing enough, especially when your face was filled with terror. You also know why I'm here? Because of the ad, and you turned it down. Are you sorry? Yes. <laughs> now, can you give me any better than your mother did why I should take the job? Perhaps. What are they? Good food. I'm on a diet. Peace, tranquility, and silence. I'm claustrophobic. A lovely room facing south. My constellation's the North Star. But the room's next to mine. 
You keep the door locked? No. My door is never locked. That's the first positive argument. There are others. There's only one important thing, and that's for you to try to be like your mother when she was young, in temperament. I see my mother's made a great impression on you. My mother brought the seeds of these plants from Mexico. She makes a kind of tea with it. She drank it before. Mother refuses to sell the palace because of the greenhouse. She's afraid the plants won't grow anywhere else. So long as I'm here, I'll bring her a few. got over the wall again. Chase them away. Hurry up, you've got to chase them out of here. Just a few stones are enough. They made the garden, the greenhouse. Why such a fuss over a few cats? My mother and I don't know what to do to get rid of them. I'm an expert in plants, too. I grow herbs for cooking. Are you inviting me to lunch? You mean you'd stay? Of course. You'll find some yellow berries, way over there. Will you go pick me a handful? Yellow berries. Why didn't you stay in bed? Uh, yeah, I knew the doctor was coming. Yes, I called him. I came to connect the electric current to the bell where I wouldn't hear if anyone rang. My daughter gave them to me. She passed by a moment ago. But tell me, why was she so upset? Perhaps she saw the same thing I did. It wasn't pleasant. What? There's a dead cat in the greenhouse. Somebody tortured it before killing it. This neighborhood is full of the most awful kind of hooligans. And they sometimes climb over the wall to steal or to chase those poor animals. Please give me your arm. What's your opinion of my daughter? Well, she's rather different from other girls. But why did you say you lived alone? Because I'm jealous of Aura. And I'm afraid some ordinary, common individual might deprive me of her. You see, Aura grew up alone without ambition and without any vanity. She has no conception of the value of her own youth. Her behavior is infantile and disconcerting. Instead of expecting the admiration of men, it is she who admires them like that, quite openly. And she always seems to be in love, Lord knows with whom, perhaps in the abstract. And that is why a chance encounter with a common individual might even be dangerous, which is why I want her to meet a man of importance. Hmm. Well, come and fix the cushions behind my back. I'll wait for your doctor here. What type is he? Is he charming, at least? He's discreet. Now, he needn't examine you if you'd rather not. <laughs> you really believe what Aura told you. <laughs> no, don't you worry, I'm not drunk. My daughter thinks I'm afraid of dying. In her imagination, she sees me seeking oblivion in a paradise produced artificially. Do you believe it? Do you believe that I'm drugging myself? Then why not, if it gives me pleasure? So you got yourself invited to lunch. So you know that as well. There are no secrets between my daughter and me. 
You can find her up in the library. Sure. She's in the library. Yes, yeah, she's there waiting for you. Well, my dear fiends, we are in for a treat tonight. <laughs> uh, I have a short film by independent filmmaker Jay Crimson, and it's called, well, of all things, The Witch. <laughs> Since we're having a big feature film called The Witch that was made in way back in 1968 or 9, I thought we'd have a brand new film, very short film, called The Witch, which would seem very appropriate. So let's go to that right now, hmm?
Aura. 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 disappeared. Of course I am. Think about you all the time. And you? Well, keep everything warm, including you. I'll be alone as soon as I can. Now, it's something very amusing. Mother's husband, your father, in fact. Oh, excellent job. Where was it done? In Mexico. Very strange. Do you think my mother's abnormal simply because she kept the body of the man she loved more than any other? I'm sure a lot of women would do the same thing if they could. I would. Does your mother come here often? Yes. Stays and looks at him for hours. So, you were brought up here all alone with your mother instead of... Little Red Riding Hood, you were brought up on these. Didn't your mother forbid you to read them? Why should she forbid me to? Quite right, quite right. Remaining here for lunch? If you do, I'll prepare a special menu, something erotic. I mean it seriously, with these old recipes. Let me see. Code a la main. No? No. Ah, here it is. How would you like this pheasant a la Lezinski? A pheasant well hung with white pepper and cloves. Cloves, too? Of course. It's an appetizing recipe. But who is this Lezinski? A Polish princess who married Louis XV. Erotic woman? I'd say. When she got married, she was 22 and he was 13. 13? Then I'll choose this recipe, pheasant a la Lezinski. But I'm not 13. My goodness. Imagine the effect that a dish of this kind must have had on that poor little innocent child. In any case, for your information, I don't need it. One never knows. Ah, yes. For a drink, we'll prepare this one. Pousse l'amour. Why are you doing that? Want to excite me? Yes. Want to make love with me? And without pousse l'amour, I assure you. Do you want some music? Music? Wouldn't be a bad idea. Yes, I'm 
make love with you. But you must do it as I say. Without touching. Without your hands. Possible. How do you undo the buttons? Please promise to do as I said. I saw you, huh? What day is today? It's Monday. All this time I haven't seen you. I've been here alone. With your mother. Happy to see me? Yes, of course. But you too. What's the story? Well, you see, that man attacked me. That's the story. And... Did you resist him? Naturally. You beat him? You scratched him? You bit him? Yes. You did? Yes. Do you confirm this version of the facts? Absolutely. You confirm it? In writing, if necessary. Excuse me a second. I was only looking for signs of scratches and bites. But there's nothing. Look at him. Quite handsome. Tall. Prefers the women of others. Who is he? I have never seen him before. Who is he? Nothing to do with her. It was her mother. She even put an advertisement in the newspapers asking for a new librarian. And yes, to put a little order in this library. To work in this library? Am I wrong? Am I addressing the late incumbent of the job recently sacked? No. I haven't been sacked by anyone. And no one's going to. Who asked him to come here? It wasn't I. It's got nothing to do with her. 
I didn't ask you. I don't understand. Why did you have him come here? I'm no good. You want to replace me. No one wants to replace you. You know you're the only one I want. But it's not true if you told him to come here. There he is in flesh and blood. Look at him. After all I've done for you, for Consuelo. Shut up. Do you know what I've done for them? You don't know. I've counted the spiders in the walls, the worms in the woodwork, the threads in the carpets for many years. That's a pity. Didn't clean the place up a bit as well. Anyway, calm down. I didn't accept the job. Refused it. But he didn't refuse it. The truth is, I didn't want him. Is your mother the same opinion? She doesn't want him anymore. It's true she had him come here. Her impression was a good one. But when she got to know him better, she changed her mind. But you're lying on the bed, together. I must beg your pardon. I'm sexually very aggressive. I can't resist a woman. Now, wait a minute. So you don't want him? No. My mother had seen him on the street and spoke to me about him. I was glad to have him here. But he's worth nothing. Nothing compared to you. My mother's already told him to go. And now I'm telling you. Hear what you said? You're the one who's going. We won't quarrel anymore, will we? No, my love. Promise? Never again. But you mustn't go away again. You mustn't leave me alone for such a long time. I almost go mad when I'm alone. And besides, you always leave so suddenly without saying a word. I get up in the morning and you're gone. Why do you do it? We've always been so happy together. What's the ending of the comedy? Now you can see the signs. One moment. I'd like to speak to you. What's your name? Sergio Logan. Sergio Logan. Listen, Senor Logan, will you tell me whether it was the Senora, the old woman, who told you to go away, or whether it was you who wouldn't accept the job? What's the difference? Big difference to me. Please answer. Uh, it was the Senora. Yes, she changed her mind. So you had to put me at ease? For God's sake. Yes, I know you think I'm crazy. But it's a pity not telling the truth, believe me. I'm sorry. Listen. Hmm? Thanks. Did the old woman have anything to say about me? <laughs> Nothing good if you want to know the truth. She hates me, huh? <laughs> but she doesn't know how I hate her. She's really quite loathsome when you first meet her, isn't she? So why don't you take the girl? the old lady to look after her books. Not that simple. Uh, I've been wondering how one with such a stupendous girl like Aura on his hands has such a mm, unsatisfied air about him. Oh, so you wonder. Well, go on. I've got an idea about the old lady, but I hope it's not true for your sake. Yeah, go on, go on. Continue, continue. Go on and amuse yourself. Continue. Huh, well? Well, granted that I was a marvelous girl, if in order to have her, the price were that, I don't think I'd pay it. I don't understand what you're talking about. You've already been sacked. Why don't you go? There's the door. Well, I swear I envied you ten minutes ago, but no, not at all. Get out of here. I'm going. I'm getting out. the doctor left about a minute ago. Uh. I explained that he had misunderstood you. Marco! Wait! Too many misunderstandings today, Madame Llorente. And the best thing to do is to call it quits. Goodbye. Aren't you going to say goodbye to Aura?
We're sorry to see you leave. We hoped we'd found a friend in you. A moment ago, I lied to you about that poor little kitten you found dead in the greenhouse. It was Fabrizio, which gives you an idea of what our situation has been. You can imagine our life, Senor Logan. Two women alone living with that kind of a man. There's nothing to stop you, calling the police and kicking him out of the house. He'd come back. Guess he'd come back for vengeance, and I'm afraid. I don't think Fabrizio's as unpopular as you say. And besides, your ad didn't say you were looking for a bodyguard. Senor Logan, would you do me a last favor? Would you finish lining Aura's eyes? Her hand trembled today. I was mistaken. You're not what I thought you were. It's better to go away, then. The senora, what the devil's her name, told me you'd already gone. Did she? She stopped me in the hall with a smile and handed me 50,000 lira in an envelope. Pretty good, eh? You can invite me to dinner sometime. I couldn't accept it. She didn't want to be examined. Said she was feeling fine. But when I called you, she looked half dead. But who is she? I don't know. I never saw her before. What do you think? Crazy, huh? Mm, I don't think so. In these cases, I rarely make a mistake. My opinion is she takes drugs. Well, that's what her daughter thinks. And she's done nothing to stop her? She seems to approve it. Why don't you do something? The old lady might well kick the bucket. That's her business. Is the daughter pretty, at least? She was my ideal girl. Which is? A liar and corrupt. And you've already had an affair? No. Come now. A man with your fame, huh? Are you on the decline, by chance? Come on, Sergio, for consolation, I'll invite you to lunch. No, I'm busy. Um, I'll call you later. Ciao. Ciao. I'm uh, looking for a pair of angels. Madame Urente told me you might be able to help me. Can I have a look around? Please, help yourself. You come from Signora Llorente? Yes, she's a customer of yours, isn't she? Yes, she is indeed. Or maybe you're a customer of hers. She told me she was selling everything to you. Did she? And what else did she say to you? Yeah, that you're trying to take advantage of her. She said that to you? That I'm dishonest with her? She said that? No, no, she didn't say that. But she thinks it. Yes. She's fatty. Well, maybe she's not far wrong. I mean, to sell all the family possessions and not get enough out of it to... Tell me, enough to do what, sir? To live, I suppose. Why, it's years I'm buying antiques from Signora Consuelo, and you have no idea where all that money goes. Millions, my dear sir, millions. To her lovers? Spent for renovating her face. Oh, I see nothing wrong with a woman trying to put off old age as long as she can. You're talking nonsense. She's already old, much older than I am. No, I don't think so. You think it can't be? Because her face still looks young, but it's quite false, completely reconstructed. How old is she, anyway? Well, she's at least 20 years older than I am. No, it's not possible. That's what you think. I was settled here before she went to live there. She was already old. She has a very young daughter. What daughter? Aura. To my knowledge, she has no children. But who's that girl who lives with her? Never saw her. Did you come here to buy or to conduct an investigation? Strength, O oh Lord. Libra nos amalo. Amen.
What are you doing here? You must confess me. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I want you to confess me. You must absolve me. How have you sinned? I'm in a living hell, and I love it. I love the devil. Oh, the old lady. It's not what you think. I can imagine. You can't imagine anything. Explain yourself better. All right. At night, it's almost as if there was someone near me. A figure with a false body, which wants to touch me. And I feel a horrible repulsion. I know it's not anything real but only a mad dream. You listening? Hmm. And so? I love that false body. Give me absolution. Well, I don't see how I can absolve you if I don't understand what you mean. Uh, I'm ashamed. Then there's nothing I can do. You must absolve me. You must give me absolution. You must give me a priestly Stop word of it. consolation. I'm not the right man. I'm not a priest, my friend Fabrizio. Anyhow, I know who you are. I know you. You're Signor Logan. There, you see, you know how to reason. Why did you come back here? No, no, don't tell me. I was sure you'd come back anyway. Friend, what's the matter? Why don't you tell me about it? Listen. You and I must become friends. We mustn't play their game, because those two are trying to put us one against the other. Get the point now? I believe you're an honest person. I've never been in prison, no. Would you be capable of doing everything possible to prevent a crime? What crime? A crime. You wouldn't want to be an accomplice to a crime, would you? No, I don't think so. Then I advise you to leave this place as soon as possible. <laughs> Let me give you a bit of friendly advice. Really friendly. You know what I think you ought to do? No, I think you ought to leave here. Really, go out in the fresh air. Sit in a cafe, have a drink, meet some new people. Forget our uh, lots of other women in the world. You don't believe me? Oh, yes, I believe you, but I think your passion for our has upset your nerves a bit. She isn't a girl to take too seriously, you know. Hmm. I get the point now. You... You want to confuse my ideas. You want me to think that our, uh, is attracted to you, huh? No, I don't think that at all. You don't? No. I wouldn't bother. Be careful. That's exactly what happened to me the first time I saw her. I felt she was the only woman for me. Oh, now, holding one's own, is a problem, which is why she goes looking for other men like you. Listen. Let's make a pact, we do. But first, you must promise to keep it. Depends on what it is, first of all. If I can convince Aura, hmm? Just once, with you. Will you leave and never come back? Hmm? <laughs> you serious? You mean she does whatever you say, like that? Fabrizio, come for your bath. Aura, don't you see he came back again? What for? I don't know, ask him. Why did you come back? I got the impression that maybe our conversation had been interrupted. Come on, give him a proper welcome. Why don't you kiss him? Why should I give him a kiss? Well, I don't know. You slapped him before, and he's still here. Be nice to him. Thank you. Well, 
Well, this is it. This is my little nook. When I first came here, I didn't have a shirt on my back, practically a pauper. I had even been in jail. When I came out, I was penniless. The old lady gave me everything. Remember when I first came here, Howard? Remember, Alva? Won't you offer us something to drink? I've already put the salt in the bath. Perfect. And I've laid out the fencing clothes. Uh, do you sleep in them? Oh, no, it's uh, purely for exercising. Because you've got to keep in shape in this place. Otherwise, you'll end up like the one upstairs, embalmed. I think the time has come to take my bath. Excuse me. He's not mad. He pretends. He's clever. There's one thing I don't understand about you two. You seem to live here together, and yet he told me he hadn't seen you for days. Why is that? you here on purpose. On purpose to find out if... if I'm tired of him. Please, I mean it. With him around, it's impossible. I've done everything possible. I really tried very hard to convince her, but she was adamant. 
and refuses. Don't take it to heart. So long. Goodbye. Sorry. straight. On guard. Are you watching us? I'm watching. No! Stop being a hero, Senor Logan. It's quite out of place, you know. Look at him. He follows us like a miserable beggar, the Senor Logan. Well then, shall we give him the big prize? Don't ask me to do something which gives me no pleasure. Aura, what should we do with him? Fabrizio, whatever you want. Please excuse me now. Yes, my dear, you can go. Well, Senor Logan, do you get the point? Is everything clear to you now, hmm? Yes, yes, clear as day. You're a dangerous maniac. You've turned that girl into a slave, forcing her to live in constant terror. Very interesting what goes on inside old palaces. Ah, now you bring up the issue of morals behaving like all those who are beaten. No, you must see it's really quite simple. Our is happy with me. I don't believe it. On the contrary, she hates you because she's frightened of you. You even frightened me a minute ago. I didn't mean to do you any harm. I only wanted to frighten you. Frankly, I'm not even capable of harming a mouse. Well, yeah, that depends on the moment. Anyway, I've made up my mind. I shall take the job. The job's mine. You heard it hour said a moment ago. We'll ask Madame Llorente. What is it? You looking for me, Senor Logan? Good morning, ma'am. How are you? Our is very satisfied with me. I hope you are, too. What did you want, Senor Logan? I've thought over your offer. No, it's too late. Tell him, Senor, it's too late. 
Too late for what? For the job, my job. Tell him to go away. Tell him he's not needed. Tell him that we two, we three, are happy like this. Why don't you say something? What are you planning to do, huh? Our just said. I'm the one who's going to decide. Is the pay satisfactory? Yes. Mm. And you're willing to come and live in the palace with us? I know all the terms. Perfect. All right. But first you must get rid of this detestable person! Okay. Come on, go downstairs. Now pack your bags listen. and bring them downstairs. Wait, Wait. Uh, because... Don't you worry about because me. Because you must listen, they'll go you too. Aura! Stop him! Aura! Aura! Stop! Aura! Go after him! We must get rid of the body right away. Get rid of him? Uh, well, she's not serious. She is serious. Well, I, I got to report it. Well, it was an accident. I did it to defend you. What have you got to be afraid of? We don't want outsiders breaking into our privacy. I've got to prove my innocence. I'm not a murderer. If you think I'm testifying for you, please forget it. I repeat, we won't have persons who are strangers in here. Imagine my husband's memoirs fed to the press and the tie between Fabrizio and Aura, a public scandal. No. Don't count on me. And you? No, Sergio. But I did it for you. It would mean that you are giving me up. You'd ruin everything. Why don't you do as Consuelo says? And we'd be happy. 
I'll report it anyway. And you'll have to testify, whether you want to or not. I have no illusions that will testify in your favor. But I'll testify instead that you entered this house and destroyed the love between a man and a woman who were happy together. I'll be forced to say that you used violence on me. And you killed Fabrizio because he wanted to stop you. You two. Together. You wanted to get rid of him and... I was the means, is that it? Why don't you answer me? I was just a tool, wasn't I? If that were the case, we would both agree it was necessary to bring in strangers. That being the best way, perhaps, to also get rid of you. You can see we're both concerned about you. We don't want anyone to come and take you away from here. <laughs> oh, no. I don't believe it. No. I don't believe you'd do what you say. It was your chance. I was near you. I looked into your eyes. Can you swear you had no intention of killing him at that moment? I should have dropped you right from the start. Well, I suppose you've decided what to do now. Yes, of course. Your baggage trunk is too small. Put him in here. In my car. Supposing they stop me. We're both running the same risk. However, they won't be able to identify him if you do exactly as I've told you to do.
What did you do to your hand? Did you cut it? Was it the sharp stones on the rail bed? Maybe. I waited for you all the time. Anxiously. Don't say. You were worried about me. Not about yourself. Also. Fortunately, everything worked perfectly. All according to your mother's schedule. Why don't you run and tell her? Sergio, don't speak to me like that. What do you expect me to do? Jump with joy? You ought to feel very glad to be with me. What do you want from me? You and your mother. I got rid of him for you. What else do you want? Now I want you. No, I'm going. And don't worry, there won't be any scandal. The story's finished. Now you must forget everything. We want to see you happy. Be nice to her. Now that you have our full confidence, I must inform you that Aura is not my daughter. Then why did you say you were? Don't ask me questions, please. Come. I'm cold. You must have left a window open, Aura. I don't think it's cold. Aura, go and have a look. I'm cold. You can drink that stuff. Isn't it bad for you?
There she is. Don't you see her? There's always Consuelo's room. No, I want it to be in your room, in your bed. This is my room, and that's my bed. You mustn't mind if Fabrizio was here with me. You should be thinking instead how happy you and I will be here together, as long as you wish. Besides, I don't want you to feel guilty. It depends on you whether I feel guilty or not. And on you to make me forget. me if you listed keyholes as well, but now just take your ugly face away from here. Is that clear? Prefer the other one. Greetings, my fiends. Tonight, we have a special guest, a young independent filmmaker, Mr. Jay Crimson. Greetings, Jay. Hey, Bobby. Thanks for having me on the show, dude. Pleasure to be here. So glad to have you on the show. I have enjoyed your short films very much. 
as I am sure my dear fiends enjoyed the one we showed a little bit ago, the witch. <laughs> Say, Jay, can you tell us a little bit about the actors that was involved with the, uh, who starred in that uh, particular film? And maybe could you tell us uh, who or what inspired you to make, uh, to make it, to make the, the film? I'm glad you were intrigued enough to check them out. Um, the beautiful and talented Deanna Lee was the star of the Witch short that I released in early 2014, I think. Yeah, uh, we thank you so much for playing it. It's awesome. Uh, yeah, Deanna Lee, she makes clay sculptures, all sorts of art. She draws very well. She is in Virginia currently, but she should be coming back here to Michigan. Uh, so hopefully we'll be able to collaborate again and possibly work on some other projects soon. She's fun to work with and she should be a damn model. Uh, the short was inspired by the old style black and white films. Um, but it came off very artsy, like a college, college art film or something. And that's cool. Um, I like what it turned into. Uh, it was a beginning stage type of thing. So could have been worse. Um, you could say that I'm inspired by the lights in the dark, you know, telling a twisted story amid the chaos. Among all that, I'm very influenced by the 80s aesthetic, like bar lines, tape playback, like VHS glitches and uh, shit like that. Being an 80s baby and all that bullshit. <laughs> I'm influenced primarily by those kind of things definitely were an influence uh, for my short film Green Hell, um, as well as the short slasher Crickets in the Snow. That is so interesting. I understand uh, that you have a, a new film coming out. Can you tell us the name of this film and a, a little bit about it? <clears throat> Uh, yes, my new film project is titled Lilith, a J. Crimson film. It follows a drug-addled prostitute who tries her hand at witchcraft to help her out of her slump called life, uh, you know, to summon a deity for assistance. I'll just say she ends up being influenced and strange things start to happen to her. It's in the same universe as all of my other films. Kind of has a, a similar vibe, but better visuals, greater graphics. Uh, it's a twisted, dark graphic, bloody, trippy horror film. I promise that you will see something on screen you've never seen before. It's my shocker. Wow, that is great. How did you get into uh, making films, uh, Jay? Who, who and uh, what inspired you to become a filmmaker? My influences for filmmaking, um, Sam Raimi, John Carpenter, uh, Toby Hooper, Wes Craven was classic. Um, Jonas Ackerland, he did a handful of music videos and that's what he's primarily known for. But uh, he directed Lords of Chaos and Spun. And I'm influenced by both quite a bit. The the very first Halloween 1978 movie by John Carpenter is a big influence, but Evil Dead totally as well. Evil Dead for their creative uh, visuals and uh, practical effects came off very well on screen. And I love those movies. I see that many of your uh, films are shorts. Is uh, your new film a short? And if so, do you have uh, plans on doing a feature length film in the future? Ah, mm, my newest movie, Lilith, is looking to be my first full length, but we aren't quite sure yet. Oh, I'm a musician too. I play drums in a band called The Candle Burners, but I'm known for the vocalist of No Class Assassins, hardcore metal band from Michigan on Hellfire Records. Um, and my hardcore punk band, Chemical Valley Mutants. Check them out on Facebook. All of my links to everything is on my Facebook, which is facebook.com 
slash no class J. Well, Jay, you really are a talented young person, and we all hope you nothing but the best. Thank you for allowing Monster Movie Night to air your film, uh, The Witch. And thank you for being here. <laughs> Thanks for having me on tonight's show. I love what you're doing. Keep supporting the underground. Message me on Facebook. I answer. <laughs> Facebook.com slash no class J. Peace. What a great talent, and I look forward to uh, seeing more from uh, Jay Crimson. You can see more of his films on YouTube at Crimson, uh, Crimson Videos. Now, let's get back to tonight's feature, The Witch. <laughs> uh, the big feature length, The Witch. Hmm? <laughs> Aura, you there? Aura's not here. I've prepared your breakfast this morning. Here it is, all ready. And I've prepared your bath. Aura's not much good at housekeeping, you know. Oh, I've brought your bags up. Will this do for today? Aura was feeling very happy when I saw her. And you? Are you happy? Yes, I'm very happy. But, uh, well, like all happy men, I'm afraid something may come along to disturb my bliss. I'm worried about that, too. The first thing this morning, I hastened to read the newspapers. All's well. A lot of things happened yesterday. And who knows what ideas pass through your mind even regarding me. Yes, me. But I ask nothing. I only want to see you happy. Does that reassure you? Very much. Start working in the library this morning. And take care of Aura. I got up so early. Aura, today I'm going to take you away from here. But this is my house. Oh, no. Consuela will stay here. You come with me. This is where I live. I don't understand. Why? Why do you want to stay here? Is it because of her? Now, don't start telling me what I should or what I shouldn't do. If you think you can, you're mistaken. You put me in a bad mood. I'm sorry. I'm beginning to miss Fabrizio. If nothing else, for my sensing practice. I need a partner. Why don't you try? <laughs> Come on, I'd like to see what you're able to do. If you're much better than him. <laughs> it's all yours. Stop it. You think you can scare me? <laughs> now, you listen to me. I accept you as you are. That's the way I like you. But don't mention Fabrizio again. But do you really think he came into this house, lived here for years, leaving no trace whatsoever? I've of him. Fabrizio is not so easily forgotten. I don't want to hear his name again! But he never asked me to leave Consuelo. 
I'm sure he stayed here for me alone. He was a poor, crazy fool, and he died like a fool. Don't think you're so much better than he was. Besides which, as a man, there's nothing to be said against him. Perhaps that's what annoys you, huh? That I'm able to compare him to you. <laughs> the Greek, you huh? <laughs> you won't do the same to me. You'll find out. <laughs> Get you out of here whether you like it or not. No, you're not taking me any place. I'm not going to stay under the same roof as Consuelo. She's an even more dangerous maniac than Fabrizio. Then give me up. I'm not going to give you up, and you know it. Then resign yourself to staying with her, even without me. What do you mean, without you? I mean that often I'll go away, and you'll stay with her alone. I'm going to lock you in, and we're going to find out the truth of this, all right. Don't lock it. Why not? I don't want you to. Why not? Because I'm feeling bad. I'm feeling bad. I don't believe you. And I'm not going to let you out of here till you tell me who you are. I'm out of... And who's Aura? Your mistress. And why are you a prisoner in this house? I'm happy to live like this. No, you've got to tell me. I've got a right to know. I killed a man for you. No. Uh, let me go! Let me go! No! Aura! Let me get out! Aura, what's the matter? I hate you! Aura, let me what's out! You? I want to get out of here! Aura! What's the matter with you? Look at me that way. Your eyes must see in me only aura. It was she alone you held in your arms.
Something you imagined. You must never lock Aura in. Don't ever do it again. I must be free to go away. And return whenever she wants to. Sergio, you're upset. Your clothes are all dirty and wet. Come on. Come. Let's go back in. You mustn't hate her. Remember, if you're able to see me and touch me, it's because she wishes it. Embrace me. What is this litany? <laughs> Get up. You're ridiculous. Why don't you leave, huh? Go and look for another job. I like it here. I owe you three months back salary, which uh, <laughs> I don't think I'll be able to pay you. Do you remember the last page that was written by your husband? Don't you remember, man? Sergio, bring that manuscript back to the library. Yeah. These are his last thoughts. Consuelo insists upon raising those plants in the greenhouse. I told her to resign herself to old age, not to... tempt God. One morning, I found her clasping her pillow and raving. She shouted, Yes, I've done it. I've succeeded. I've reincarnated her. I can give her life. Do you know what his last words were? Do you? His last words were these. Who are you, Consuelo? What did he do? Killed himself. I'm not afraid. I'm going to stay here, always. <laughs> You'll see. You'll see one of these days. You'll get tired. The day will come when... <laughs> You'll decide to go. Don't you be so sure. I'm sure of it. Very sure. I am counting on it. Come and help me. Why? Why do you do this to me? 
What, what have I done to you? If you might only see yourself, you're a changed man. Take this statuette to the antique dealers. When does Aura come back? Did you hear me? I said take this statuette to the antique dealers. Me? Yes, they haven't anyone to come and get it, and the money's needed right away. Come on, try to be useful once in a while. Come on. Will you hurry? When is Aura coming back? Don't know. You've been saying that for a month now. Power is not here yet. It means she's not satisfied with you. Please. I beg you. Please make her come back just once. I must speak to her. But Aura doesn't want to see you. You have no more to say to each other. Drink it. Drink it. No. Let me go. Drink it. No, let me go. No. 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 Drink it. No. You've become unbearable. But by acting this way, you make the situation worse. Why, you, you ugly old bitch, I hate you. But you be careful. I warn you, you be careful. That's why. Do you want to make me angry? What have you got to gain when you well know only I am able to bring Aura back? When? Today? We'll see. But first you must take the statue to the antique woman. My price has already been agreed to by telephone. Who is he? Someone I know. Sergio. Hmm? Ah, Charles. Wait. Sergio, where are you running to? What's wrong with you? What do you want? Who told you I was here? No one. I was going to the antique dealer with my friend, the decorator. Oh. I'm fine, and so are you, I see. Goodbye. Isn't she your former friend? Am I wrong? I don't have friends anymore. Oh, what a pity. Why don't you go back to her? Uh, seems like she still wants you. Why are you going out so often? I'd like to enjoy a bit of sun. Are you coming back soon? I don't know. I didn't want to. He's the one to blame. You came here in answer to an advertisement in the newspapers, yes? Huh? Yes, sir. I came here for work. Uh. Oh. You know nothing about. 
about it. Huh? No. I swear it to you. It's not my fault. The job is yours. Tell him to go away. Oh. No, I'm going. No good at anything. I hate looking after libraries. I'm going. Saturday, don't, don't go. Wait. Sergio, I don't want that other. It's she who wants him. The same thing. It's the same thing you told Fabrizio, isn't it? Yes, the same word, Sergio. Things seem the same as before, but they're not. I'm not the same. I've changed. I don't want to die. I want to live. Even without me? What is life if we have to be separated? Sergio, aren't you glad to see me again after my absence? We were very happy together, weren't we? Don't listen to Consuelo. I'm not tired of you. Remain here. Don't push me into the arms of someone else. Send him away, even if Consuelo's against it. Send him away. Do we always have to do what she wants? Yes, I don't have to. Do you love me? Yes, I swear it. Then wait. Wait. Are you leaving me? No. Wait. Wait. Paola.
What a wonderful film. Ah, that ending. I mean, really, can they not think of anything uh, new? I mean, Burning the Witch. Ah, uh, mercy me. I mean, there's, there. well, we have seen them hung. We have seen them disemboweled. We have seen them uh, uh, stabbed and spiked and piked and all sorts of different ways. So, yes, I guess burning was the the go-to uh, thing back in those those days. <laughs> I'm so glad that, uh, that it's stopped being a norm. I, I really am. In fact, I'm really glad that uh, we nowadays see uh, the witch as a much more different character, type of character, one that uh, has uh, many facets, so, you know, neither good nor bad, but just a regular, regular person who may or may not help you, depending on their mood. <laughs> well, my dear fiends, we hope that you enjoyed tonight's feature, The Witch, the feature length film, The Witch, and our short by Mr. J. Crimson, The Witch as well. Ah, you got two movies in one plus an interview. We're coming up, eh, Boris? <laughs> well, my dear fiends, until next time, as always, keep screaming.